Van Rapphorst. Welcome to MBA Now. With us today is Greg Council of Periscript. Greg, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. So, Greg, first I want to ask you about the mountain of paperwork that still exists, you know, in all forms of lending. Why can't this be, you know, addressed and why can't data fi standards fix this? Yeah, it's a, it, it seemingly is a, a simple problem to solve, but when you start to peel that onion back, there's just a lot of different issues associated with it and from... Uh, you know, we were in a in a conversation with a senior product person at a major lender, and she referred to it as just this comfortable binky, so to speak. That that, that there's just this um, attachment with documents and and the feel good factor, let alone the the amount of behavior around a risk averseness that that conspires in there. There's just the the practical difficulty with adoption of technology. And then, of course, um, there's once you've figured out what type of technology you'd like to do to, to alleviate yourself from use of or, or having to manually process documents, there's the whole process, there's the art of, of how do you want to integrate that and the change management that occurs with it. So it's, it's seemingly, unfortunately, um, organizations often take a, this should be simpler, and they go into it and they rush into this, this problem with the eagerness of solving it in a simple way. And they quickly find that they get mired into all sorts of issues that slow things down significantly. And unfortunately, a lot of times actually create such havoc that uh, the projects just stop. Um, they just drop them all together. So what has changed in regards to te technology that can really change things? Well, I would say that a lot. Um, okay, a lot and a not a lot. On the a lot side would be the fact that just the technology with respect to automation and automation in all forms. So it's not just dealing with, uh, you know, the big data problem, but it's also dealing with unstructured data within documents and structured data and the ability to do analytics. All of those, those capabilities or those technologies have matured quite significantly over the past couple of decades to the point now where, you know, we've always in business been talking about automation and, and doing things intelligently, whether they were called decision support systems back in the 90s to more intelligent anal analytics today. Uh, all of these concepts that we've wanted to implement within the organization but really didn't have the technical wherewithal or the actual technology to support it are starting to meet that set of expectations. And a lot of that is propelled by this thing called AI or machine learning. And that's a result of just increases in compute power and, and just more, again, more maturity with the software solutions themselves. So uh, that is that is probably the biggest push is that with less effort and energy, you can get some really good results with respect to automation. Uh, if not uh, straight through processing of data and making decisions, if not that, then certainly a, a, an alleviation or significant alleviation of all the process frictions. So that's something that we see as being a major factor. On the other side, though, is what hasn't changed. And, and unfortunately, that deals with the human being in the process and all of the factors involved with the change management within an organization and, and just the art of adopting technology. So what are the risks with adopting automation for document-based information? Yeah, uh, in short, there, there's probably, if, if you were to slice it up into uh, the different areas, I think I'd start with the risk number one is not really, is the in the approach to, be, to begin with. Um, and that starts with just a, a general understanding of what level of automation is practical within uh, a certain a given process, whether that's on the origination side or whether it's a post-closing audit type of process. But just trying to get a feel and, and getting educated enough to where you can set expectations appropriately. That's the first risk because if the, the danger is, is that if you have expectations set way too high, you're never going to meet them. And either it's going to just be a long grind in a, in a project uh, to get there, if you can, or it's just going to, uh, the project itself is not going to meet expectations and be considered a failure. Uh, part and parcel with that is, is 
setting expectations is with the ability to identify the specific requirements with respect to automation. And the requirements are key because that really drives the approach in technology identification and ultimately selection. So those two really go hand in hand. Um, and I would say risk number one and number two. Well, so what really matters when it comes to using automation in this regard? What matters in using automation? Um, I would say, if you look at automation, you can look at it in two, two categories. One is automation to become more efficient. And so I, I consider that assistive automation. So it's the, it's the art and the approach of applying different types of technologies for automation that, are, that work in concert with human beings to relieve the, the drudgery or the things that are more rote in terms of processes that can be just taken over by systems or other types of software to do that. Um, so the, the thing that matters there is just the general efficiency of a process. And you can measure that in terms of time it takes to review a loan application or the required uh, supporting paperwork. Um, so we define that often in terms of the number of tasks and, and what can be obviated and ultimately how efficient that knowledge worker is or that person is. The second one is a little bit more difficult to understand because it deals with more data science principles. And this is where I get into terms like accuracy or straight through process and types of capabilities. So in that case, you're looking at, um, it's typically, it, it involves the data that you're, that you're wanting to convert. So in terms of a, a 400 uh, page loan file and you need specific information out of it to be delivered in a structure way that's useful to be worked by a person or by another system. It's really about how much of that data you can locate and pull out of those documents at a specific level of accuracy. And I say it's more difficult to understand because we often think of accuracy as just being just one type of thing. It's how much, you know, the comprehensiveness of the system. And there are a lot of there are at least two different types of underlying uh, measurements that you need to take into consideration. I just covered those, which are what, how many tasks can be automated, how many, how much data can be can be pulled out of those documents, and the degree of accuracy of the data that you pull out of those documents. Both of those go run in tandem that define um, how efficient a process can be made in just in terms of the data quality. I guess lastly, I would just ask what areas are ready and then what's not ready for automation? Right. Uh, if I were talking 15 years ago, I would say, especially within the lending space, there, uh, I would, it would be very difficult to really take that, uh, that challenge on. Um, today, it's not just the, the forms piece of it. So if we consider in, uh, document automation, there are three general buckets of document-based information. We can talk about structured documents, which are often the forms that are involved, uh, the applications that are involved, but also it could be other types of standardized documents that are you know, that are consistent within the, the, the process. Uh, the other types of, of information are the semi-structured types of documents, which are, I mean, you might think of an appraisal. That may be, that may, uh, be a combination of both some structured form data, but also some highly variable data out of it. And then the last one, which was the most difficult, were those unstructured documents where you could consider them the, the deeds or the promissory notes or other types of documentation where you didn't have reliable positions of where the data are or labels to describe where the, where the data are. And you had to, and those are pretty much off limits. Um, so I would say in, in terms of the, the most reliable areas are definitely within that the structured documents as well as the semi-structured documents. Uh, those, the, the, the technologies and the techniques that are applied to delivering high degrees of precision and high amounts of data are tried and true. Uh, probably two decades worth of real practical hands-on experience with that. The latest area though that I would caution organizations to, you know, to just test out is in that unstructured realm where you're, you're having to apply new types of techniques and technologies, natural language processing being one of them, 
to be able to reliably locate that data. But I'm saying we're, I would say that we're probably about another 18 months out from having all three of those document types and the data under data that you need out of them being able to be processed or parsed uh, with a high degree of reliability. So uh, it, it, it's really a, a, a the, the light is at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. Well, it's really sooner than, than we, you know, we would have expected. It's great to hear. Uh, Greg, thanks so much again for stopping by, talking a little bit about how you see, see technology tackling ta uh, paperwork in the, in the years ahead. Appreciate it. My pleasure.